All right. Woo! Black Friday. Hello, everybody. Happy Black Friday, you magnificent melon heads. Big special going on. Every store across the country right now, 100% off all the crap you don't buy. Wah, wah. That's just your little message from me real quick. But this is not the Black Friday edition. No, today, I look, I was just debating with my moderator, Mish, whether we were even going to go live today because there wasn't a lot happening. The markets closed early today. You know what? We're not even going to get into the indexes today. We're not going to talk stocks because I wasn't even going to do this stream until I got wind of this story about FTX's bank. And look, folks, when I, when I tell you I'm struggling through this right now, right? If this corruption stinks to such high heaven, this is at the most upper echelons of the financial regulatory system. And if you could look inside my mind right now, what you would see is blue screen of death, like error syntax, unspeakable levels of corruption, system error, reboot the whole thing. Like I am failing open right now. I, this just blows my mind. This blows my mind. I'm going to try to get through this. I just picked up this story today. I, I mean it like it wasn't a half hour ago that I first caught, maybe an hour ago, I caught wind of it. And I was on the phone with Mish the whole time. I was like, are you kidding me? Are you, it, it stinks so bad. Look, I will give you a more refined look at this story in the future. I'll do videos about this when I've had more time to research it and edit it and refine it. So this is all raw right now. This story is breaking, all right? Um, but special shout out to my friends in Spokane, Washington. All you awesome folks out there that I had the pleasure of meeting when I went out there for the Silver Symposium, I am calling on you guys right now because I need you guys for this one. All right, the, the press has failed us. We do not have an in, a free and independent media. It, this explains to me why Sam Bankman-Fried is not yet in handcuffs, why he is yet to be charged with a crime. Not one million counts of obvious bank fraud. No, a crime. This guy has not been charged with freaking jaywalking yet. Nothing. And this is why. This bank story that we're going to get into today. I, and <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I'm, I'm laughing. I'm dying on the inside. My God, the, the rot and the corruption. All right. And I need you guys out in the Spokane area to help me chase this story down. First of all, do not adjust that dial. <laughs> do not change the channel. What you're looking at, folks, this is Sam Bankman Freed's bank. This is FTX's bank. Looks like some dude's shed, doesn't it? Like, do you remember that clip from the Wolf of Wall Street when they're hocking these penny stocks on the unsuspecting investors and they made a joke about the corporate headquarters and they showed some guy's shed in like the middle of the boonies? Like, this is the bank. This is the $115 million valuation bank. That Sam Bankman Freed bought in March of 2022, just this year. And oh my God, guys, <laughs> this is so bad. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to get through this. Thank you, Mike Bender from Robin RC Model says sometimes you'll see the SH. <laughs> sometimes you just see it floating. Yeah, and sometimes it lingers just below the surface. This one is a floater, folks. <laughs> and this is stinking up the whole room. And I want you to remember this story. Every time somebody tells you they need to regulate crypto, we need crypto regulations. We need the government to protect us. Remember this story. Remember this one. Thank you, Mike, very much. And I agree. This is a floater. All right. So this is Farmington Bank, what we're looking at right now. Farmington Bank, it's this like 85-year-old little local bank in the middle of Farmington, Washington. All right. And this is the picture that's circulating on Twitter right now. But if you think I'm kidding, let's go. Let's go to Google Earth, right? Or Google Maps. Here we go. Farmington State Bank, right there. This is Google Maps. And when you when you zoom in on on the map, you'd forgive me for thinking this is some guy's shed. Right? There it is. Right there on the corner of Main Street, which pretty much goes to gravel as soon as you get past Farmington Bank and First Street. There it is. Let's zoom in on the street view. Let's see what we get. Uh, where's the bank? Is this the bank? There's some dude's trailer there. There's some guy's house. Uh, okay. Nice nice little barn. I wish I had a barn like that in my backyard, but I'm not a banker. Oh, there's the bank right there. You see it? 
Let's zoom in on it a little bit. There's Farmington State Bank, the $115 million valuation bank. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say Farmington Bank? I meant Moonstone Bank. You see, on March 1st of this year, this was rebranded Moonstone Bank. Ooh, well, that sounds crypto-y to the moon. Get it? Rocket? Why well, ride that rocket, baby? There's Moonstone Bank HQ, folks. There's their corporate headquarters. I wonder if they have a juice bar. Check that out. And, uh, you know, I'd love to zoom in and take you down the street, but uh, look, goes to gravel. Oh, look, here, there's some firewood there. Maybe they were getting involved in uh, European energy markets. Maybe they were going to sell that wood over into Europe and play the, the energy game. I don't know. But that is the bank, folks. That's it right there. And there's a couple of other couple other images. Where is it? No, no, not Exeter's Pyramid. I guess that was the only one. All right. So look, this story broke in the New York Times today. And uh, I, I have to give credit to the New York Times. And look, folks, I am not one to credit the New York Times hardly ever. All right. You guys know me here. I don't do shout outs to the NYT, but they actually did a little bit of journalisming. They, they journalismed today. Congratulations to Stephen Gandell of the New York Times for actually serving your vital role as the watchdog of corruption. Free and independent press. This story just came today. Crypto firm FTX's ownership of a U.S. bank raises questions. Man, is that mildly put. Because I just read through this and my kids are like, Mommy, is Daddy okay? Because there's strange sounds coming from the office. As, as I'm reading through this article and this other article in Protos we're going to get to, I'm giggling, I'm laughing, and then it's like I'm getting punched in the stomach. Oh, like, I, 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 I'm telling you, folks, like, I need time to really process through this story right now. This is raw here. I, I wasn't even going to go live today, but when I saw this, I said, nope, there's a live stream in here. So I want to take you through this. Through a subsidiary, FTX invested... $11.5 million in the parent company of Farmington State Bank, which has a single branch and until this year, three employees. This is it. This is the front door of Farmington State Bank. It doesn't even say Farmington State Bank or Moonstone Bank on the door. It just says bank. This is bank. Oh, look, go Cougs. There you go. Support your local uh, your local scholastic athletics. That's good. Go Cougs. All right. But this is the bank, dude. This is it. They, now, they FTX, <laughs> through Alameda Research, of course, through Alameda, which we know now that Alameda and FTX was basically just a single slush fund, but they bought 10% of this bank for $11.5 million. That is a $115 million valuation for this bank. Go Cougs. Among the many surprise, surprising assets uncovered in the bankruptcy of the cryptocurrency exchange FTX is a relatively tiny one that could raise big concerns. A stake in one of the country's smallest banks. Farmington Bank was the 26th smallest bank in the United States. And here it is. Like, like, let's zoom out. Let's zoom out. <laughs> I mean, like, why did FTX centered in the Bahamas, buy this thing. What the heck were they doing? Why would they buy this obscure little bank right here on the corner of Main Street and wherever? I mean, here let's look at it from another angle here. You know, that's, there's the firehouse in Farmington. Thank you for your service, firefighters in, in Farmington. It's probably a volunteer company, a small town. There's another angle of the bank right there. Like, it's one room. It's a, it's a one room office. <laughs> This bank had $10 million in total deposits in 2020. So how does a bank with $10 million in total deposits receive a valuation of $115 million? What were they buying? What were they actually buying? I'll tell you what they were buying, all right? This is why Sam Bankman-Fried through Alameda bought this bank because he needed the ability to print money in the United States, real money. He needed the ability to print real money but he couldn't build it because if he built it, he would have had to open up his books and he would have had to ask the regulators and there would have been tests and proof of what, it, who knows. But he found the owner of this stupid little 
doghouse bank in the middle of nowhere. He found somebody with dollar signs in their eyes who was willing to hand over their licenses and their pre-existing regulatory compliance in exchange for millions of dollars of what we now know was stolen money from FTX. That's why he bought this bank, because he couldn't build one. Sam Bankman Freed could have built this bank for chump change, but he couldn't have, he didn't want to open up his books that would have exposed the scam. Now remember, when you're a bank, you can effectively create money out of thin air. Banks that are members of the Federal Reserve System, right? When you deposit $10 million in a bank, you can give $100 million in loans off of $10 million in deposits. It's the very nature of federal of fractional reserve banking. So it's not too big of a stretch of the imagination of what he might have been planning with this. I'm just going to throw this out here, all right? Now, I don't have any paper proof of anything. This is just me. We're freestyling here, folks, all right? Don't take any of this and invest on it or anything like that, right? This is just, say, hypothetically, Sam Bankman fried deposits $10 million in the shed here, and he has the shed, hypothetically, of course, give him a $100 million loan because they can print their own money, basically. They loan him $100 million real dollars collateralized by, I don't know, say FTX's garbage token, FTT. Oh, yeah, here. Let me borrow $100 million based on the $10 million of stolen money I just gave you. I'll use my FTT, which I printed out of thin air and gave to myself, and I'll borrow $100 million from this shed. Now I've got $100 million real U.S. dollars. And imagine what a guy like SBF or Caroline Ellison at Alameda Research could have done with $100 million of real money. I don't know, maybe pump the price of Solana or maybe pump up the price of the FTT token that they just borrowed against or maybe pick some random altcoin, say melon coin, right? Melon coin. Put $100 million into Melon Coin, drive the value of Melon Coin up, and then, of course, rug pull it and sell it. He bought himself a money printer. That's what he did. Now, let me take you through because there are, there are connecting lines and other players in this. My God, I cannot wait for this movie. I cannot wait for this movie. This, this script is still being written of this movie, folks. You are watching this movie play out in real time and i just hope somebody cool plays me <laughs> can i get a mention like can we play one of my live streams or my 99 second video in the background maybe like on a bar tv or something while something's happening in the movie whoever makes this movie please write me in that'd be great okay so i saw this story in protos.com i've never heard of protos.com i have to admit this is a new one all right, but man, Protos did a good job with this. The curious case of FTX and Farmington State Bank, aka Moonstone. The bank was first formed in 1929 in the sleepy town of Farmington, hugging the Idaho border. It's home to just over 100 residents and features zero restaurants, hotels, or pharmacies. It doesn't even appear to have an ATM. So, Farmington State Bank doesn't even have an ATM. By the way, my Spokane folks that are out there, my Washington viewers, if any of you guys are anywhere near this area, all right, this Farmington, Washington, and I know some of you guys are out there. I met some really cool people out in Spokane when I was out there. And this is only about 50 miles south of Spokane, right? Where's Spokane? Spokane was right here somewhere. It's close. There it is. It's about 50 miles from Spokane. If any of you guys are close to this area and you can, and you can get near this building, like without putting yourself out. I mean, gas is expensive. Don't go driving three hours on my account. Somebody get me a picture of what's going on in this building. Like, is this building, it should be surrounded by news vans right now. All right. You shouldn't be able to get anywhere near this building right now because this, the corruption in this story goes so high. Every media outlet in the country should be sending some local affiliate in Washington to Farmington State Bank to knock on the door or to ask questions. By the way, this isn't the, like this picture here. This isn't the parking lot. This is just the side of the street. They just painted parking spaces on the street. So you, like it's not even private property. You just drive right up on the street. You stand right there and you're on public property. So it's not like they can like tell you to leave or anything. Get a picture. Is the bank even open? Are there any human beings inside? Can you walk in and say hello and ask how to start an anything, right? Like 
don't don't go in there and and be like you know investigative journalist like up in their faces or anything don't be confrontational but i would just like some proof that there's actually a functioning bank at this location and that there's human beings inside anyways if any of you guys can get me pictures of this building or like video yourselves out there i would love absolutely love to put it on the air on my channel so any of my Spokane folks that I met out in Washington at the Silver Symposium, you guys were awesome. It was so good to talk to you. Somebody get me some actual footage of this building, of this bank. And I would really like to know, is there any media there? That's what I really want to know. If we have a functioning free and independent media right now, there should be news vans surrounding this building if they were actually doing their job. But I don't think, call it a hunch, folks. I just throw them out there. Call it a hunch. I don't think there are news vans surrounding this building right now. I think everybody's more focused on whatever Elon just tweeted or whatever is the World Cup, whatever other story that I could give a flying melon about. All right. But this, oh, my God. Because you have to realize, like, to get to this point, what it takes. All right. Farmington Bank, it's as rural as they come. This is a picture of Farmington here. We're back to the Protos article here. All right, Farmington Bank, they had an unsecure website built on WordPress, all right? The former bank's, the bank's president bragged about not offering credit cards or not having more deposits than loans, that he was a hobby farmer back in 2010, all right? But in 2020, this is when this gets really juicy. In 2020 is when this started. And keep in mind, 2020, that's when the last Bitcoin halving was. That's when this Bitcoin bull market started, was at the last halving. In the middle of 2020, that's when this parabolic move in everything started. A company named FBH purchased Farmington State Bank. FBH's chairman is Jean or Jean Chalopin. It's, it's a French company, so I think it's probably Jean. Jean Chalopin. I'm sure I mispronounced it. Well, Jean Chalopin, who is the chairman of FBH, which bought Farmington Bank, he also happens to be the chair of a little bank known as Dell Tech. Now, any of you guys who have been following corruption in the cryptocurrency space, you recognize that name Dell Tech right away because Dell Tech is the only bank in the world that will touch Tether. Yeah. The Tether people, the people who bank, the people who supposedly handle the, uh, at one time, $87 billion in reserves that Tether supposedly holds that nobody knows where it is or what it is, but they swear it's out there. They attest to it. Yeah, that bank, Dell Tech, they came in and they bought this little shed. This thing, no, they're in this, this, they bought this shed in 2020 for some reason. Jean Chalopin, this French guy, all right, came in and bought this shed in 2020. Now, if you want to know a little bit about Jean Chalopin, I just Googled the guy on Google Images just to see what he looks like. And the first thing that comes up is this picture. And you see right down here, bottom left hand, it says Crypto Bahamas. Oh, good. <laughs> Seems like a trustworthy guy. First of all, that's totally a rug on top of your head. I'm not buying it. As somebody who is uh, probably losing his hair himself, I will never put that garbage on top of my head. But Jean Chalopin of Crypto... <laughs> Crypto Bahamas, these stories write themselves, right? There would never be any crypto fraud in the, in the Bahamas, right? Of course not. Moving on. This is the guy who bought this random shed of a bank with a total of $10 million in deposits in 2020, all right? And he, oh, he also happens to be the banker for Tether. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This is so messy. So shortly after the, after the purchase, by the way, I am having fun right now. I apologize for the unrefined nature of this stream, folks. This is raw, and I'm having a blast, but we're doing it live. Shortly after the purchase, the bank pivoted to deal with cryptocurrency and international payments. So they went from this obscure little bank that didn't do credit cards, that the owner was also a hobby farmer, they had 10 million deposits, all of a sudden, this French a-hole who does crypto in the Bahamas, what's the worst thing that could happen? Don't answer that. He comes in and he buys the bank and they pivot miraculously to cryptocurrency and international payments. But due to Farmington State Bank's backwards traditions of not taking on risky loans, 
or not even being a part of the Federal Reserve System, put a pin in that, we'll be right back, they couldn't move money anytime after the purchase. And this is when they sought Federal Reserve approval, and they got it. They got it. June of 30th of 2021, Mary Daly, Fed Governor Mary Daly, remember out of touch Mary? <laughs> She welcomes, she welcomes this new bank into the Federal Reserve System. Oh, well, now they can basically print money, folks. You know, banks, when banks make loans, they loan money into existence. And this was a place at the table for Tether. This gave Tether the ability, not Tether, I'm sorry, Jean Chalapin, who also happens to be the chairman of the bank that may or may not have the $87 billion of reserves that Tether claimed to have. On June 30th, 2021, they became a part of the Federal Reserve System. Yep, Tether. The Tether people were part of the Fed. Oh boy. Oh boy, what's the worst thing that could happen? Don't answer that. And they're jokingly saying in this article, hopefully it was forcing them to undergo a series of rigorous tests and examinations to confirm that it meets all standards necessary, right? Think about everything you have to go through, folks. All the KYC, know your customer and compliance things you have to get through just to open a bank account in your name these days. Surely this guy from Deltec, this Jean Chalapin, surely this guy underwent very rigorous standards of review prior to getting approval into the Federal Reserve System, right? I'm sure he opened up all of his books to forensic accountants. And I, I think back to what I went through just when I wanted to start a business checking for my little LLC for my YouTube channel. I, my God, what I went through. And I had to make several trips to the bank to actually talk to the manager of the bank to reassure him that I am a physical person and not some bot trying to create an account with his bank. And Oh, my God. Because when you fill out the forms for a business checking, there's no form for a uh, YouTube channel, content creation. It's not a common business. So it, it triggered all these red flags with the regulators. That was me trying to start a stupid little business checking account with $2,000 for nobody special. But this guy can become a member of the Federal Reserve. <laughs> this is great. This is fun. This is me having fun. This is what I do for fun. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> Farmington State Bank, which for over 100 years hadn't found a need to become a part of the Federal Reserve System, was now its newest member. Right here, this little shed is now a member of the Federal Reserve System. But wait, there's more. <laughs> then this article is hilariously written. By the way, hats off to Protos.com. I don't know who this outfit is. I've never been to this website. There's no name attached to the article. Uh, but man, what a fantastic read this article was. And I'm telling you, my kids were like doing wellness checks on daddy because of the noises coming from my office while I was reading this article. After Farmington State Bank set up international wires and SWIFT transfers through the Fed, it took full advantage. In March of 2022, fake algorithmic stablecoins like Terra began to experience their first cracks and lost in the media frenzy was this PR newswire that was pushed forward by largely unnoticed announcement at Alameda Research. Remember Caroline Ellison at Alameda Research? Remember who Caroline Ellison's daddy was? Caroline Ellison's dad, the Stanford Law Professor and the compliance lawyer who used to be Gary Gensler's boss at MIT. Gary Gensler, the um, you know, the guy who runs the SEC, the yeah, yeah, the chief financial regulator in the country. <laughs> sure, he wasn't involved at all. Yeah, that Alameda Research owned by Sam Bankman-Fried's company, now suspected of commingling funds with FTX customers, had invested $11.5 million in the rural bank. And here is that PR Newswire release. This is from March 7th of 2022. FBH Corp, that's the company owned by Jean Chalapin, the chairman of Deltec, Tethers Bank. They raised $11.5 million in private equity funding from Alameda Research Ventures. FBH Corp and its fully owned subsidiary, Moonstone Bank. Oh, Moonstone Bank? Where did that name come from? I thought we were talking about Farmington State Bank. 
Well, you got to back up the truck because on March 1st, this shed building, Farmington State Bank, uh, they filed for the trademark of the name Moonstone Bank. And they began doing business under the name Moonstone Bank. Six days after changing their name, they got $11.5 million from Alameda Research. If you're an FTX customer and you're wondering where your money went, congratulations, it went towards buying the shed. That's where your money went. You bought yourself 10% stake in this $115 million valuation shed. FBH Corp and Moonstone Bank have committed to making traditional finance systems work for innovative small to medium-sized enterprises who are underserved by the traditional financial industry. Surely that is why they got involved in banking, not to print their own money. Moonstone Bank's unique platform is designed to break down the barriers that limit the growth potential of trailblazing SMEs looking to increase their footprint. Okay. All right. Well, perhaps I'm misinterpreting the innovative nature of Moonstone Bank's platform. It's a really solid platform. It looks like a very well-built building they got there. What is that, cinder blocks? This is a very innovative platform you have there. Let's look at, let's look at the platform from another angle. Oh, they got flowers out front there. They got a tree. What is that, a willow tree? I don't know. It's a nice tree. They got, it's a very innovative platform right next to the firehouse and right before the street turns into gravel. Yeah, that's totally a platform designed to break down the barriers that limit the growth potential of trailblazing SMEs looking to increase their pr footprint by providing easy access to modern banking features, valuable services, and the means to take their businesses further. Oh, God, that's a well-written piece. Man, this bank sounds awesome. Let's go to Moonstone Bank's website. Check it out. A bank built for startups. Look, there's digits hovering in the air. Look at the digits. It's like, take the blue pill or take the red pill, Neo. Look, do you see the chains? The digits make a little chain. Wow, this is very innovative. Um, I don't see anywhere on Moonstone Bank where it says, I'd like to start an account. I don't see that anywhere. Let's check out, read our story, who we are and why we're doing this. Okay, this is Moonstone Bank, the innovative platform. They were founded in 1887, even though they actually filed to become Moonstone Bank on March 1st of 2022. No, they were founded in 1887 with 35 plus employees, even though they only had three employees right before they changed their name to Moonstone Bank. We're on a mission to deliver modern banking solutions, supporting the evolution of next generation finance. Our vision is to become the inclusive financial partner of choice for innovative and forward-looking industry leaders. By the way, did any of you guys read Sam Bankman Freed's text messages when he thought he was being candid with a reporter off the record? And he mentioned how in today's woke nonsense, as long as his words, he said, as long as you repeat the right holy epitaphs or something like that, they'll think you're a good guy. And they knew all they had to do was say inclusive and everybody would just love them. Just here you go, buzzword, 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 woke buzzword. Everybody, I'm a good guy. I'm a billionaire. I want to give away all my fortune. I want to save the climate and all the other stuff. Forget the fact that I'm robbing millions of people. And again, he has yet to receive any charges. He has not been charged with any crime in any jurisdiction anywhere in the United States. He has not been charged with a crime. He is still a free man walking around, spending stolen money, living the high life, living better than any of us do. This guy is still walking around, living a sweet life on stolen money. No prosecutor, no law enforcement official, no regulator, nobody in the United States has yet to charge Sam Bankman-Fried with anything. Not one crime. But moving on. So Alameda buys $11.5 million. They buy a 10% stake in FBH, which is basically just a shell company, started for the sake of buying this bank. And again, the only reason they bought this bank was because this bank had a pre-existing license to be a bank in the United States. That's what they bought for $11.5 million. And somehow they got away with that. Some, somehow nobody raised any questions. And, you know, look, I, I just want to, there's a, one sentence here I want to get into here. 
No, not bookmark. I'm doing a control F. Where is it? No one is able to ascertain what the $11.5 million investment from Alameda Research was for. No one can explain why a small rural bank in southeastern Washington state would be used to move millions of dollars by Alameda, and no one can fully explain the connections between Farmingdale, Dell Tech, FTX, Alameda, and Tether. And if you've been watching this channel since I started it, Middle of last year, I have been warning about Tether, that Tether was going to blow up the whole crypto universe. Stay tuned. That's coming. Not to mention, it remains unclear how a Bahamas-based company like FTX, with ongoing investigations by top financial watchdogs, was able to purchase a stake in a federally approved bank. It seems Sam Bankman-Fried's complicated web is only beginning to untangle. This bank. In this town, I mean, look at this town. And by the way, I'm not knocking rural America, all right? I live on the edge of nowhere. I live in rural PA. I love it out here. I love it. I absolutely love living in rural Pennsylvania. I just, it's a great, it's a great place to raise my kids. I, I just absolutely, so I'm not knocking middle America, okay? When I point to this town and when I point to this building and I mock it, I'm not mocking people who live that way. I live that way myself. I'm mocking the fact that nobody noticed that this was getting a $115 million valuation. That no regulator wondered why is a hedge fund that deals exclusively in cryptocurrency that's headquartered in the Bahamas, why are they buying a stake in this bank, giving it a valuation 10 times the gross book value of that bank? Nobody asked that question. And then when that bank suddenly requested permission to be part of the Federal Reserve System, nobody opened up the books of their owners. Nobody pulled the thread that led to Tether, to Alameda, to Deltec. None of the regulators, all the way up to Mary Daly, Federal Reserve Governor. Nobody pulled that thread and asked that question. Nobody even said to Alameda, I'd like to meet your accountant. Because they didn't have one. Think about how many people need to look the other way for this to happen. How many bank regulators? How many of the guys in the blue windbreakers with FBI, ATF, FINRA, all the other letter organizations? How many of them had to be told to stand down, to not look? How many bosses, had to, how many wheels had to be greased to get that through? Everybody looked the other way. Everybody, all the way up to the highest echelons of financial regulators in the United States, federal, state, and local government, everybody, all of them. Nobody asked the questions. They all signed off on it. They didn't just not prosecute. They signed off on it. They approved it. They staked their names and their reputations on it. And you'll wonder why SBF hasn't been charged with a crime. Because anybody who would charge him with a crime is complicit in this. The stink of this goes so high. It goes so all the way up to the top tiers of the Federal Reserve. And I, I'm just, I am beside myself. I cannot imagine how corrupt. And, and these people are now pointing to this FTX fraud and saying, see, this is why we need to seize control of it. They were trying to seize control of it. That's what this was for. That's what all of this mess was for. All of these regulators up into the Fed, the bankers, Gary Gensler at the SEC, Alameda Research, Caroline Ellison, her dirtbag parents, and yeah, I'll say it, outright dirtbag parents, the Stanford Law professors. Anybody with a Stanford Law degree ought to be ashamed to have them associated with them. The compliance lawyers. They were all part of this. And look, I see it in the comments. I see a lot of people commenting right now, crypto tulips, it's backed by nothing. Look, there's a reason why they did this. All right, because, and I'm, I'm not going to make any friends with this. Bitcoin is people's money. Bitcoin is money created by people that they can't control. And this whole mess, 
this Sam Bankman freed last one picked in gym class loser. And Caroline Ellison, who thought daddy could protect her. And Gary Gensler, who sold out his influence. What did Gary Gensler get? Who's digging into Gary Gensler's personal finances, by the way? They all looked the other way. Why? Because they were trying to take it over. They were trying to print money so they could buy it all up so they could control it. Because they know their money is becoming worthless. They know they're going to roll out central bank digital currencies soon. Which is going to be how they control inflation by saying, you and me, we can't buy anymore. We can We've used up too much fuel and too much. We've eaten too much food this week. We don't get any more. Our money has been turned off. That's what they're going to do with CBDCs. And they know if we have precious metals, if we have gold, if we have silver, or if we have Bitcoin, that we can go and buy those things without using the money that they control. And so they need to make sure that they deny the average person access to a monetary system that they control. Sam Bankman Freed is just a Trojan horse. He's just a, a boob who was put in place so that they could quietly take over cryptocurrency. And they all looked the other way while it was happening, while this shed was bought. And this was corporate headquarters of the takeover of cryptocurrency. By who? By the government. You don't get this. This thing, this thing doesn't get a license to print money in the United States without the government saying yes. And look, folks, this is going to get a lot messier. This guy, this Jean Chalapin and Sam Bankman Fried, and look at all the names on the Moonstone website. All right, you guys. All right, internet, all you guys out there. It's time to start looking into Gary Reaver. Chief Executive Officer of Moonstone Bank. Jim Breffold, Chief Financial Officer. Praful Manker, Chief Risk and Compliance Officer. Daniel Ranallo, Chief Technology Officer. Javier Chalapin, Digital, Chief Digital Officer. Wait, Javier Chalapin. Uh-oh, nepotism. Nepotism. Remember, this is, uh, this is Jean Chalapin. Uh-oh, we got a little nepotism. Sprinkle some nepotism on top here because there's a Javier Chalapin. Carl Ehler, Tanya Thigerson, Laura Bernelli, all these people. Joe Vincent, general counsel. Oh, I can't wait to find out what their lawyer was up to. Who's the general counsel of this $115 million shed bank? I'm sure he's a good guy. Probably never chased an ambulance, right? Note sarcasm. Tim Courtney, head of financial crimes. Wow. Well, that's blatant. They actually had a financial crimes division. And I don't think it was about detecting and solving them. I'm the head of crime. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tim Courtney, head of crime at the world's dirtiest bank. Nice to meet you. Wow, you put that on your business card? Head of financial crimes? Congratulations. I hear business is booming in financial crimes these days. Just, just ask anybody with uh, Crypto Bahamas next to their name. Natalia Hahn, VP of Banking Operations. Josie Booth, Director of Business Operations. And look, maybe some of these names here, maybe some of these people are just like interns who were hired to like set up a printer or, or make sure the Wi-Fi was working inside the shed. Maybe some of these are innocent people who are just caught up in this, all right? And if that's the case, I apologize for using your name. But right now, your name is attached to something that stinks, something that stinks at a really high level that goes all the way up to the highest levels of financial regulators in the United States. People who are going to point to this crime that they were complicit in and try to use it as an excuse to give themselves even more power. And by the way, if this channel gets shadow banned or if my channel suddenly disappears, then you know it goes even deeper than that. Because this may be one of those streams that gets my channel in trouble. Whoever they are, they, I, I doubt this guy was the end-all, be-all of this scam. I doubt it was, FT, it was Sam Bankman-Fried. Have you listened to Sam Bankman-Fried and what he's been tweeting lately and what he's been writing and putting out? He is not that smart. He's not the, he's not the mastermind of this scheme, folks. He just isn't. Sam Bankman-Fried is not good enough to pull this off, not without very powerful friends. 
And that's where this story needs to lead. Who are Sam Bankman Freed's powerful friends? And look, I'm I'm not somebody to congratulate the New York Times, but this is some real journalisming, some actual journalism from an actual journalist. Stephen Gandel, thank you so much for doing this story. And Stephen Gandel's editor, who allowed this story to run in the New York Times, thank you. More of this. Find out who approved it, who signed off on it. Look into their financial statements. Did the regulator, did the manager at the Fed office or Mary Daly, whoever approved this, did they suddenly buy $20 million in real estate? Or did FTX buy their parents a condo in the Bahamas recently? That's the kind of stuff we need to find out here, folks. And to all my folks out there in Spokane area, out there in Washington, if you guys are feeling froggy, take a drive out to Farmington State Bank. I would really like to see what's going on on this little corner right now. I'd really like to know, are the news vans there? Is anybody there knocking on the door and asking for a comment? Don't put yourself in harm's way, folks. Don't, you know, if comply with any lawful orders. If they ask you to leave their private property, then leave, right? Don't, don't do anything stupid. But I would really like to know what's going on in this little shed. And who's, who's coming and going from this little shed? I'd like to know. So, any of you melon heads, any of you, any of you Washingtonian melon heads that are out there that feel like taking a field trip, I would love to see a little bit of video outside of Farmington State Bank. I will totally put that up in the air, folks. Let's see what the internet produces. All right, guys. I told you I was going to keep this one short because the markets were closed today. Uh, that's about all we're going to do today. Uh, I'm telling you, there is so much more to come. You're going to hear about this little bank. You're going to hear about Moonstone. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry, guys. I miss you, Mike. I miss he's disappointed. It's not next to the laundromat. There could be a laundromat in there. Mike, there could totally be a laundromat on the map. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot going on there. By the way, give my best to the Farmington Volunteer Fire Company when you're there. That's right across the street. Those guys, they put their necks on the line. They don't ask for anything in return. Give those guys a pat on the back while you're out there if you go visit them. I'm just going through the comments, folks. I want to make sure I didn't miss anybody here because I was rambling. I was just, I'm, I'm in, I'm in bad form today because I wasn't prepared, man. I, I woke up. I had a little bit of a food coma going, a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of hangover from everything that was going on yesterday. It was Thanksgiving Day. I wasn't prepared for a fraud of this level, and this, this goes so high. I mean, this, this isn't just a corrupt hedge fund in the Bahamas now that scammed a lot of people out of it. All right. The fact, understand for, for this to happen, like, and I, I, I take you back to what it took for me to start a bank account. The compliance laws and the anti money laundering and, and everything set up in the US right now, all this stuff, especially since the Patriot Act was passed, all this stuff that was put in place to prevent financial crimes. And nobody stopped this. Everybody approved this. They allowed some of the biggest crooks in the world to do this. And nobody's saying anything. Sam Bankman Free is still not in handcuffs. Why isn't Sam Bankman Free in handcuffs? I'm telling you, SBF, he's going to get himself Epstein. I'm telling you, dude, there's no way they're going to give him an opportunity to sing. No way. He's got dirt on too many. Thank you very much, EC660. I appreciate that, sir. Thank you for the support of the channel and the super chat. Folks, start pulling the thread on some of those names. There's just there's too much to track down right now. I mean, me and Mish, we 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 scour, we scour the headlines, we scour the web, we go through the websites, we look up the names, we look at the LinkedIn's. By the way, all those guys from Moonstone Bank, they've all scrubbed their LinkedIn profiles. They're hiding. They are running for cover right now. So <laughs> I'm telling you. Some of these guys are going to be disappeared. Some of these guys are going to get Epstein. This goes way too high. This is filthy. This is so filthy. The Federal Reserve, they were members of the Federal Reserve. So these people had the ability to loan money into existence. At the same time, they had the ability to loan their tokens into existence and use it as collateral. Sam Bankman Freed and these guys at Tether, they bought the ability. Through this FBH company and through this shed, Farmington Shed State Bank, whatever, they bought themselves the ability to create 
actual U.S. dollars. All right, not not their funny tokens. Not they could actually create dollars into existence, or they were very close to it. Think about what kind of damage those these people could have done with that ability, and then think about how many powerful people had to look the other way to enable it. And what did they get in return? Stolen money. They got money stolen from FTX customers in return for looking the other way. It stinks. This is gross. It's freaking 2022. This kind of stuff is not supposed to happen. Sam Bankman Fried is still not in handcuffs. It's time to start demanding answers. All right. So help me, folks. All you melon heads out there, help me pull the threads. Start digging into some of those names and those banks. Go to the About Me page on my channel. You will see my email there once you click that you're not a bot. If you find something, send it to me. And I will absolutely give you credit, unlike some other channels out there that maybe made a copy of somebody's 99-second FTX video and didn't give any credit. Uh-oh. I think I didn't notice that. I'm not going to call you out by name, but that was... Uh-oh. That wasn't so nice. Anyways, folks, we're going to call it there. It's been a uh, heck of a week. That story was just too juicy to pass up. I want you guys to have an awesome weekend. Spend this time with family. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, need, I need a drink. After that, I really need a drink. Thank you guys so much for your super chats. By the way, hi, mom and dad. I snuck that in at the end. I forgot. I'm sorry. Mom and dad just left a few hours ago. And I forgot to say hi, mom and dad. I love you guys. And uh, I will see you soon. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters for everything you guys do for the channel. I appreciate that very much. Link down in the description should you feel so inclined. And until next time, everybody, live small and dream big.